Hi, I'm Christine Hassler, master coach, keynote speaker, and best-selling author of Expectation Hangover. And today, I'm here to teach you about expectation hangovers, which are basically the disappointments in life. When things don't go according to our plan, or they do go according to plan, but we don't feel like we thought we would, or life just throws us one of those unexpected curveballs that we really didn't want. When you finish this lesson, you'll walk away with tools for how to really leverage an expectation hangover because I promise there's something good in every one that you have. You'll learn how to prevent the same kind of expectation hangovers from happening over and over again, and you'll have a lot more confidence when it comes to pursuing your goals and dreams. So you're probably wondering, what is an expectation hangover? You might not have heard about it because I made up the term after I had many of my own. It's when one of three things happen. Either things don't go according to plan. You thought you'd have that successful business launched and it just goes right into the tank. Or things do go according to plan, but you don't feel like you thought you would. You finally get into the relationship of your dreams or you have the job that you want, but the confidence and the fulfillment that you thought it was gonna bring you isn't there. Or life just throws you one of those unexpected curveballs. You get laid off, you get dumped, you or someone you love get diagnosed with an illness, or you just get a parking ticket and it just bums out your day. The thing about these expectation hangovers is they happen to all of us. Disappointment is part of the human experience because as humans, we learn through contrast. I know something's hot because I know something's cold. But also as humans, we don't like to be uncomfortable. We don't really like to be disappointed. We all like to have control. I really do think control, and maybe sugar, are the master addictions that we all have because we like certainty, we like to know. And that's why expectation hangovers can be so troubling because we go into that phase of uncertainty, of not knowing why something's happening and of things not going according to plan. And I don't know about you, but I like having plans, I like checking things off the list, and I like it when things go according to my plan. But what I've learned is that when we have too much certainty in life, when we're holding on too tightly to our plans, sometimes we miss out on those amazing opportunities that we don't see because we're so tunnel vision on our plan. And that's why I get excited when expectation hangovers happen to people. Not that I like to see suffering, because let's face it, they can be pretty brutal, but because I know for all of you, if you're having an expectation hangover or you've had one in the past, there is a tremendous opportunity for learning. And I know this firsthand, not just because I've worked with thousands of people at this point on this, but because I have had my fair share of expectation hangovers. I'll share with you some of the big ones. So, like I said, I liked planning. I was always an overachiever. I was always that person with the checklist and the goals and the vision board, and I took great comfort and pride in that. You see, behind all of that, I was actually really, really insecure. I didn't feel like I ever belonged in school. I was teased, the boys never liked me. And so I just formed this story about, man, I must not be enough in some way. I must not be likable. So I came up with a compensatory strategy, and we'll talk about that a little later, of being this highly driven overachiever. Anyone relate to that? Like do, 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 success, success, success. When I achieve this, then I'll feel confident. When this happens, then I'll finally have my dreams come true. Living in that when then. And that was my story, that's what I did. One accomplishment, one success, I'd check it off the list, then i just raise the bar. Enough was never enough. Where's the fulfillment? Where's the contentment? Where are all these things that I'm looking for by trying to achieve something outside of me? So I kept searching. I went to college, then I went to Los Angeles to pursue a career in Hollywood because if you're desperately insecure with something to prove, LA is a great place to go. <laughs> So I end up in LA and I work my way up the entertainment ladder and by 25, I'm promoted to a Hollywood agent, which was very young. I was the only woman in my department. I was making six figures. I thought, this is it, finally, I'm gonna be happy. Still, wasn't happy. Major expectation hangover. So I thought, like a lot of us, that the answer was fixing something outside of me. That's what happens when we're in disappointment, when we're in an expectation hangover. We're like, what can I change in my external world? The job, the relationship, maybe I just need to lose a little weight. Maybe I need to move to a new city. Oh, I need to go like, to an ashram in India. That's gonna fix it for me. We look for something outside of ourselves to fix it. So that's what I did. I thought, well, if I just change my external conditions, which is the job I don't like, because I worked my way up in this job, but I didn't like it. I never stopped along the way to really ask myself, what do I really want? Who am I? And I didn't realize I was pursuing goals driven by my insecurities versus pursuing goals driven by my passions. 
There's a big difference between those two things. So decide to quit my job. That's the solution. And I was going to you know, work in the fitness industry. That was my other passion. And then things just got worse. I tried to support myself as an entrepreneur. I didn't really know how to be an entrepreneur at the time. My health was getting worse. I was going into debt because I tried to keep up my Hollywood lifestyle without my Hollywood income. Uh, I had gotten a bad fight with my family over something, so I felt separation from them, which was really hard. And then the cherry on top was six months before my wedding, my fiance broke up with me unexpectedly. Curveball. Big expectation hangover. So here I am. I called it my quarter life crisis. No, I did not make up the term. It's been around for a while. And I'm 26 years old, and I had lost everything that defined me. I had lost everything that I clung to for a sense of identity and security and safety. And that's also very human. We cling to relationships and job and money and our health and our family for that sense of safety, for that sense of identity. And I was at a really low point. And I realized that people have been through far worse things than what I'm sharing. But all of us have those moments in life that feel like a rock bottom moment, a moment of, wow, something really needs to change. And whenever we have those moments, whenever we're in the depth of our expectation hangover, we really have two choices. We can say, why is this happening to me? And we can go further into victim mode, which isn't super empowering. Or we can go, what am I learning? What's the lesson in this? And fortunately for me, I had a coach at the time who helped me start to ask the question, what is the lesson? And the first insight I had, and an insight is different than a thought. You know, we can intellectualize a lot, but an insight is when you think something and it lands as truth. Like you're like, oh, oh. And sometimes insights are a little hard because they require a certain level of self-honesty. So the insight I had was, all right, I'm out of the job, I'm in debt, I just got dumped, family's not talking to me, my health is bad. What is the common denominator in all of these situations? me. Humbling. Now, at that moment, when we realize we're the common denominator, we can go into self-criticism and blame, which a lot of us have a tendency to do. Not a good place to go. Or again, we can go, hey, if I created all those things I didn't want, maybe I can create some things that I do. And so this is another reason I'm so passionate about teaching this lesson on expectation hangovers to all of you, is because I know that you have an opportunity to create what you want. You just have to kind of go through a process of elimination, expectation hangovers, to see what it is that you don't want and learn some things about yourself along the way. So now that you know what an expectation hangover is, let's talk about how to leverage it. So first I'm gonna tell you what we don't want to do by going over some of the common coping strategies that we all use when we have an expectation hangover. Let's face it, disappointment doesn't feel good. The reason I call it an expectation hangover is because most of us can identify with how terrible a hangover is, right? You feel depressed, your head is hurting, you don't want to leave the room, you lack motivation, you have regret, you want to rewind time and do it over, and you just want the feeling to stop. That's how it is with an expectation hangover as well. We just want to feel better. We'll do anything to feel better. And so how we cope is we look for a quick fix. So we maybe drink a little more, eat a little more, be on the internet a little more, date a little more when we really shouldn't be, or we distract ourselves with something like work. A lot of us just dive right into work because being a workaholic is one of the most socially acceptable forms of coping with an expectation hangover. Or we just try to pep talk our way right through it, like, I'm good, this is good, I'm gonna be strong, and I'm just gonna push through all this disappointment. And along the way, we're just pushing feelings that are natural to come up just right under the rug and just suppressing all of that. And then another common one that I see a lot, especially in the personal transformation world, is the spiritual bypass. Oh, this is just happening for a reason, and it wasn't meant to be, and I am fine. <laughs> And a lot of times we aren't. We aren't fine. Fine. Feelings inside not expressed. So how do we really deal and heal expectation hangovers? One of my least favorite sayings, another expectation hangover that I had was going through a divorce in my early 30s. And something people used to say to me is, well, time heals all wounds. And I'm like, I don't want to wait for time. I want to figure out how to heal this 
now because I want to like be able to move on with my life. So we don't want to wait for time. We want to really dive in and leverage and heal these disappointments now. So how do we do this? The first thing is we need to move into acceptance. One of my favorite quotes from Byron Katie, and I'm paraphrasing it a little bit, is when you fight with reality, you only lose 100% of the time. So that's the thing with expectation hangovers. We want to change it. We don't want it to be this way. We don't want to accept that we got laid off. We don't want to accept that we got dumped. We don't want to accept that something bad has happened. So we fight and try to res resist reality and go into the past or jump into the future. But we have to begin in the present moment by accepting. Acceptance doesn't mean resignation. Big, big difference. Resignation is, I'm a victim, I give up, life doesn't work for me, no one loves me, I'm not enough. That's resignation, that's victim, that's not where we want to go. Acceptance is, whoa, this kind of sucks. I don't like this. However, I'm willing to see what the lesson is for me. I'm willing to ask, what am I learning? And I'm going to stop fighting against reality and really dive in and leverage this disappointment. So after we go through acceptance, we're going to work through an expectation hangover on my four level treatment plan. And those four levels are working on the emotional level, the mental level, the behavioral level, and the spiritual level. And I'm going to go through them briefly and then you'll see me work more specifically with people in the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions.